Hello, Randy Rain here, and this is a bit of a lost episode. A while back, I was doing some restorations on some Radio Shack remote control tanks, and I had three of them that were very similar, and they looked just alike, but there was some differences. And it got down to this one, which was there was a big difference. It was smaller, way smaller than the other ones. I fixed all the gears and all the mechanics inside, but when I got to the electronics, it did not work. And I found a weird blob of solder, which couldn't be right. And it looks like it was from the factory. And I don't understand how this thing worked at all with the big blob of solder there coming from the factory. So this tank got put up and forgotten about for a while because I didn't know what to do with it. I mean, I could go and change out all these electronics and hopefully that would work. Or I can do what I'm going to do, and that is replace all the electronics with new electronics. And I have an idea on how to do that, so let me show you. So I had footage of me fixing all this here. You can see all these gears are brand new. I redid all this here. I can see here I needed a spacer for this one to keep it from moving back and forth. So I even put a little spacer down there on this one. Okay. But this footage is lost. I don't know where it is. But you can see all it does is reduce it down. This one turns that one, goes to here, that one, this one to that one. And so when it goes one direction, it will go. But then this over here, it's like a little ratcheting. So it sure would be easier. Just to get this switch off of there. <laughs> Boom. That's how you get that out. That's how you do it. Bend these down. Melt that into place right there. <laughs> That'll work. I don't even need these. That can go away. Two of them can go together. Okay, I think a good thing to do is just to connect the grounds. And that goes to the... That's the ground from the 9 volt. This is the ground from the double A's. Okay, so those two can go together. So, and then this can come down here, this side of the switch. So the negative one side is going to go to the electronics, one side is going to go to the motor. So that brings us to the sponsor of this video, which is PCB Way, who are the makers of high quality PCBs, 3D printing, and more. But today we're focusing on the PCBs. I can honestly say that there will never be a sponsor for any of my videos that I don't actually use. And I have several PCBs that I've had made from PCB Way. Actually, it truly amazes me because if you're like me and you've been doing electronics as a hobby for 40 years now, you're used to perf boards, and you would never even have thought that you could actually have your own PCBs. Well, you can. I mean, it's just amazing. And these are like super high quality. This is not some little toy that you're getting. You're getting professionally made PCBs. But if you're like me and new to this, don't worry. They're there to help you as well. It's a really easy process. They'll work with you. If you're having problems, they'll help you fix it. They're so cheap. It's so easy. It's such a great product. If you're into electronics, even as a hobby, 
I highly recommend learning to do PCBs and get some of your own PCBs made from PCB Way. So go check them out at PCBWay.com and I thank them for sponsoring this video. So this is how my circuitry is going to work. It's going to use the L293D motor control. This thing can control two motors, but I only need it to control one. So half of this stuff is gone. I won't be using any of these pins here. The chip is pretty much divided up into four sections, two sections for each motor. That's why there's multiple negatives, but these two are the negatives. This is the positive, and this is five volts here, and this is what controls the chip. This is not what controls the motors. Positive for the motors is here, and that can go up to 60 volts. It's not the same electricity, basically, that's actually powering the motors. The output for the motors is here, on either side of the negative. You'll need to put a capacitor across there. That just keeps the interference from the motor from having any problems. These are the input wires. And if you make one go positive and one go negative, the motor will turn one way. You switch it, it'll make it go the other way. Both positive or both negative, and the motor doesn't do anything, just like normally. There's one more pin here, and that's basically like a switch to control the motor. I don't need to be able to use it as a switch, so I'm just going to jump it across here and keep it on. Then I have the RC control, and I just need one of the outputs. And the output is going to go high when you push the button, but then when you let off, it might not go to negative. It might just go to zero, nothing. So there is a drop-down resistor that's going to pull it down to negative. And then if you just connected that, well, there's half of it. If I just put an inverter here, well, that would change it, and that would make it work. If it comes in positive, it comes out negative, whatever. But I don't have an inverter. There's a chip that comes with like four of them on there. I don't have that. You can always make your own with a transistor and a couple of resistors, which I tried, but trying to get it to fit on this board, it was too hard. I didn't know why I was wasting my time doing it. When the PCB is made for a pickaxe chip, I just put a pickaxe chip in here and programmed it to be an inverter, basically. So all the pins that are not being used get grounded. I use an input and two output. And that is how my circuit is working. This is a five volt voltage regulator. So this will regulate it to five volts. All right, everything should be wired up. Nine volts coming here, getting turned into five volts. Five volts coming into here. The switch down here is all going to be negative. So the negative just goes through here. So that's both this, the 9 volt and the double A's all come together, go. When you turn the switch on, this gets negative. These two are for the motor. I'm going to leave them like they are. Turn this on. I have a remote here. Push this button. There it goes. This one to here, and this one to here. So now when I turn it on, the motor should go in one direction, and when I hit the button, it should go the other direction. Mm -hmm. 
Now there's a light in here that's supposed to be the firing. That's what this right here is for because it's only supposed to get three volts and not full six volts. And then over here, this is a switch. It's touching this shaft and then the shaft has a little red thing down here and it makes this one connect and disconnect and so that's acting as a switch things from short circuiting everywhere tracks on without having to take everything apart. Pretty stretchy. Oh yeah. Now I have to get this into here. I think this is a three volt battery in here actually. No, it is a 12 volt. It's a 12 volt. Boom, boom, boom. Hopefully it works on a nine volt. So that's what's in here. Guess we're going to find out. <laughs> that was interesting. What do we got here? All right, I see no other way than leaving this like it is, using the switch getting rid of all that and replacing it with this. So all this has got to go and I don't really want any of it. So I'm just going to start chopping it. Positive. That's what that be doing. That's the gas now. Sets in there like this. So the positive is only coming in right there. And I need it to power stuff to not act just as a switch. I'm just going to bring it to right here. That's positive coming in. Okay, that is positive. That has got to go right here. So that 
gives it power. I just got to get positive to that side of the switch. From there, I guess I'll take this one out right here. surgery here. It's going to go right there. I looked all over on the circuit trying to find the antenna, but who knows? So does 9 volts work? We have to find out. Yeah, so for me it's just a lot easier to remake the electronics than it is to poke around and try to find something that doesn't work. Because it's probably down to just one little thing. Uh, that's too much for me. So I just do it this way and it works better. You ready to see it in action? Here we go. So I'm keeping this one because I got a little collection at this scale going on with remote control cars and stuff. And I got some cool ones coming up, promise. Anyway, if you like this video, I sure would appreciate a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more, of course, hit that subscribe button. I want to thank these people here. These are the patrons. These are the people who bring you this stuff. These are the people that allow me to do this. And I am so grateful because there's no way in the world I could do any of this stuff and show and make these videos without help like this. And so I thank them oh so very much. And if you'd like to become a patron, of course, there are links and all that stuff. So go check it out. Anyway, that's the Radio Shack Combat Tank. So, yeah. Positive. That's what that be doing. That's, I guess, now, it sets in there like this. So this side's positive. Yep. So negative is coming in all here. Cat, this is why don't you don't do that stupid shit. Now quit. Quit! God, you little shit.